You're watching a Channel 98 NBISD TV production. Hey, welcome to that geometry show. I'm your host, Kevin Corpy, and on today's show is we're going to be talking all about distances. Distances from a point to a line, between two lines, and I'm even going to be talking about something called an orthogonal line. And if you stick around, you'll even get to see me use a sharp, pointy object called a compass. So grab your pencil, download those worksheets from the district website at www.newbronfels.txed.net, and we'll begin. Lesson 7 is going to correspond with your Glencoe Geometry textbook, Chapter 3.5, Distance Between Parallel Lines. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to, number one, draw a perpendicular line from a vertex of a figure to another line. Uh, number two, construct a line perpendicular to a line through a point using that pointy compass I was talking about. Number three, determine the distance between a point and a line to actually find the distance and to find the distance then between two lines. Let's get going here. Now, if, I'm supposing you all, you've already heard, or you've always heard, that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. It's almost cliche. Well, this is true. But what is the shortest distance between a line and a point not on the line? Well, in mathematics and in geometry, when we say the distance without qualifying what type of distance, we mean the shortest distance or the closest distance. So distance itself implies that it's the shortest distance. Now, the distance from a line to a point that's not on the line is the length of the segment that is perpendicular, perpendicular to the line from that given point. And it's important to be able to draw these lines from given geometric figures. Now, we usually draw this perpendicular line from a point called the vertex of a geometric figure to a side that is opposite the vertex. And we call those lines in these geometric figures, we call them altitudes. Okay? Let's try our hand at drawing some of these altitudes. Number one, we want to draw the segment that represents the distance that's indicated in the instructions. Okay? So for the first one here, we want to find the distance from point P to line RS. Now, here's a trick that Ms. Karadek taught me and it works pretty well. You just get a little straight edge here and a little post-it note works well. If you line up the edge of your post-it note with the sign, with the side opposite the point, in this case line RS, all you have to do is slide this post-it note over until you intersect point P, which you can see it disappearing there on the screen, and then all we have to do is draw that line along the edge, okay? And when you pull it away, I've created this little line segment right here. Now this is called an exterior altitude because I had to draw it on the outside of my triangle, okay, an exterior altitude, but it is perpendicular to the side opposite, okay. Now the measure of this distance is what we're going to be figuring out in a couple more examples. All right, now we have this shape here. This is a parallelogram. We'll talk about those later on. We want to draw the line, the perpendicular line from point B that's right here to segment AD, which is on this side. So again, if I line my little post-it pad up, straight line, along this line, and I slide it down until I hit point B, boom, right in there. Now all I have to do, pardon my arms here, is draw that line. And if I take it away, that should be pretty darn close to perpendicular. Okay, so that would be the interior altitude. Because it's inside the shape that I have. All right, two more and I think you'll have this. Let's draw the altitude then from point K to segment HJ. Well, again, segment HJ is on the bottom, point K is at the top. So we line our little straight edge up, slide it across until we see point K disappearing, right in there. And with the straight edge down this uh, side of it, we draw the line and I'll put a little right angle mark showing that that is a right angle. And one more here. We've got uh, this little shape, and we want to draw the line perpendicular from point A to side BC. So again, we line up our straight edge with side BC, and we just slide it over until we hit the vertex of A. And 
Once I do that, I'll draw this line. Now when I pull it away, notice that this line segment doesn't extend all the way out. So with my straight edge, I will want to extend it out so that it intersects the line that I drew. And I generate this little, again, that's an exterior altitude. Okay, So having a little straight edge uh, is pretty useful. It kind of makes the problems a little bit easier to do. And I think that's one of the most important things that you're going to be doing in the classroom, being able to draw these altitudes. But we have a lot more planned on today's show. Okay, now we want to look at a point and a line on the coordinate plane. Well, in the diagram below, you can see that we have line DE and point P. And we want to find the measure from this point P to this line DE. Now, as I mentioned, that's going to be the distance of the perpendicular line from point P to line DE. Okay, and I have that marked here as little d. But even if I draw it like before, how can I be absolutely certain that the line that I drew is, in fact, the perpendicular line? It may be off by just a little bit, and to the naked eye, we can't really tell. Well, we can actually construct the perp perpendicular line, which has a special name when it's not in a geometric figure. It's called the orthogonal orthogonal line. And orthogonal is just a fancy name for perpendicular. And we can do it by using a ruler and a compass. Now, the ruler and the compass framework was the standard for the geometric constructions until about the middle of the 19th century. It's basically based upon uh, man's practical experience. It's how the ancient Greeks kind of developed the math. Everything was done with the straight edge and a compass. So I'll show you how we can do that to construct a perpendicular line segment to a given point. All right, so here I've made the graph a little bit larger, and we have our point P and our line DE. What we're going to do is we're going to carefully grab our, our compass here, which is kind of sharp on one point, and we're going to put the pivot point down on part P, and we want to make our compass a little bit wider so that when we extend it out, it's past our line. Okay? So you can see if I lay it flat, it's bigger than the line. Doing that, I can keep it pivoted. I'm going to make an arc right here where it intersects the blue line, and then I'll come around here and I'll make another arc. Okay? That's basically part of a circle. Now the two arcs intersect the blue line at a given point. Without changing the size of my compass now, I'm going to put the pivot point at one of the intersection of the arcs, and I'm just going to sweep another arc over here. And then I'll do the same thing over here on the other side, put my pivot point down, and I'll throw another arc over here. Now the intersection of those two arcs and the point P that I originally started with, if I connect them now with my straight edge, those two lines should be, by compass design, uh, perpendicular to each other. So I have my little NBISD unicorn ruler here, which is the best kind, and I'm going to carefully line up the intersection of my two arcs and the point that I'm interested in, and I will draw the orthogonal line through those two points. Okay, and if you can see, it looks pretty close to being perpendicular, okay, and it should be if we did it correctly. Now, we want to verify that these two lines are actually perpendicular. It ha just so happened that I happened to intersect my line DE at a nice point, which I'm going to call Q. And the coordinates of point Q appear to be left 2, so that's negative 2, and up 0. So it appears that it's the point negative 2, 0. Well, we can verify now that these two lines are, in fact, perpendicular, because last time we, we talked about how perpendicular slopes were related. They were opposite reciprocals of each other. So let's find the slope of line DE. I'm going to hop down here on this point on the line, and I'm just going to go rise over run to see how long it takes or how far it takes to get back to a point on the line. If I go up 1, up 2, and run 1, I'm back on the graph. So the slope of DE up 2 over 1 is 2 over 1, rise over run, which is just 2. That means then the slope of PQ, if it's in fact perpendicular, needs to be the opposite, so it would have to be negative, and the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. Let's verify that. I'll hop on my point here of intersection, negative 2, 0, and I'm going to try and get to point P. You have to run, rise first, so I'm going to go down one unit, that's negative direction, negative 1, and I'm going to run to the right two units. So that's down, negative 1, over positive 2. So we have just verified, in fact, that the line that I drew by my compass design or construction is in fact perpendicular to the line DE. 
Well, that's great. So now what I'm interested in is finding the distance of this segment right here from point P to point Q. In other words, the, the measure of segment PQ. Well, from a previous episode, we remember the distance formula. Okay, the distance formula, remember, D is the square root of delta, or the change in x is squared, plus delta y, the change in y squared. Now we need to know the two points for the distance formula. Well, since our two lines intersect now at the point negative 2, 0, we'll use that one, and our original point of interest, the point 0, 1. Okay? Let's go ahead and plug it in now. I get the distance is equal to the square root of the change in my x's, that's negative 2 minus 0 squared, plus the change in my y's, 0 minus negative 1 squared. Well, now I just simplify inside or under the radical, and I get the square root of negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is positive 4, plus 0 minus negative 1 is positive 1, positive 1 squared is 1. So I get the square root of 5. That's the simplified exact answer, which is what your teacher is probably going to expect you to give. And if you happen to have your calculator, then you can get an approximate that it's about 2.236 uh, units away, whatever the units might be. And we look up here at the graph and we see that two units, if I'm counting just on the grid, on the along the diagonal, it's very, it's very reasonable. So we have a, a good feeling that our answer is correct. Okay, so I know what you're asking. What if we don't have that handy dandy compass, right? Well, we can get the same answer by a little cleverness, mental grease, and some algebra. Now, here's, I'm going to outline the process for you. We can first find the equation of the given line. Then, using the opposite reciprocal slope and the given point, we can write the equation of the orthogonal line. Then, we can find the point of intersection, Q, and then finally use our old distance formula to find the distance between Q and P. It's easier done than said. Okay, let's try it out. The slope of the line between D and E. Well, we already figured it out on the previous page, but we can do it by formula. Uh, just to review, slope is the change in the y's, so 4 minus negative 2 over the change in the corresponding x's, 0 minus negative 3. So I get 6 over 3, which is 2. So that's a good verification of what we did on the previous page. Now, using the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. I can choose either one of my two points. I'm going to choose the point 0, 4, and I'm going to use the slope that I just found, m is 2, and I'm going to plug it into y equals mx plus b. So y is 4, uh, m is 2, x is 0, and all I have to do is solve for b. Well, 0 times two, uh, 2 is 0, so I get that b, which is my y-intercept, is 4. So now I can write the equation of my line back in terms of x and y. y is equal to 2x plus 4. And that's the equation of line DE. Now you're probably, if you're keen enough, you could have noticed that you basically saw that the y-intercept is 4 because it was given on the graph. But the method that I used here is more general just in case it wouldn't. All right, now that I have the equation of the line, I can find the equation of the orthogonal line using the opposite reciprocal slope and point P. Well, point P is the point that I'm interested in. It's at 0, negative 1. And if the slope of my line was 2, then the perpendicular slope, remember m subscript, subscript perpendicular, sorry, is going to be the opposite reciprocal. So it's negative 1 half. So now I can use basically the same process I did up here, except I'm going to use 0 and negative 1 for my x and y. So y equals mx plus b, plugging in, I get negative 1y equals m, negative 1 half, times x, which is 0, plus b. And again, 0 times anything is 0. So I get my y-intercept b is negative 1. So writing that line in terms of slope-intercept form, y equals m, negative 1 half x, minus 1. Hey, it's time for a break. Don't go away, though. We'll be right back after these public service announcements. <laughs> the ability to decide for yourself, you give up what makes you, you. 
Hey, welcome back from the break. It's time now for more math. Let's get right back to it. Okay, now that we've found the two equations of the lines, since they're both equal to y, we can set them equal to each other to find their points of intersection. So I get 2x plus 4 equals negative 1 half x minus 1. I've got to collect my x's on one side, so I'll add uh, 1 half to both sides. So I get 2x plus 1 half x equals, subtracting 4, negative 4 minus 1. Now, 2x's plus a half x is 2 and a half x's, which is going to be 5 halves of an x. And on this side, I get negative 5. Now, I can solve for x by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of 5 halves. And I get negative 5 times uh, 2 fifths. And the 5's will divide out, leaving negative 2. And that's the x value of my point of intersection. Now, to find the y value, I can plug that x value back into either one of the original two equations. I'll plug it into the uh, 2x plus 4 equation. So I get y, the y value is 2 times negative 2 plus 4. And that's negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. So we get our ordered pair. The point of intersection is negative 2, 0. And guess what? That's the exact same point of intersection that we found in all of our previous methods. So if I draw the line, it's the same line there. So now that I have my two points that I need to find the distance between, point P, which is 0, negative 1, and the point of intersection Q, negative 2, 0, I can find the distance between them. And it's the same calculation we did on the previous page, which gave us the square root of 5, or 2.236. OK, now, there is yet a third way to calculate this distance. And that's by way of formula. The derivation of which is similar to the previous method, but it uses variables instead of numbers. And it gets pretty sticky. So to use the formula, though, we do need to review a different form of the equation of a line called the standard form. And the standard form basically just groups your x's and y's and constants all on one side of the equation and sets it equal to 0. The number in front of the a is called the coefficient of, or the number in front of the x, sorry, is the coefficient of x, and we call it a. The coefficient of y is b, and c is the constant. So for our given line, de, which had the equation y equals 2x plus 4, if I just subtract y from both sides, I get 2x, putting the y in the middle, minus y plus 4 equals 0. I have it now in standard form. Okay? So the a would be the coefficient of x, which is 2. b would be the coefficient of y, which is negative 1. And c would be the constant, which is 4. Now we're ready for the formula. In general, the distance from a point p with coordinates x1, y1 to a line l with that has an equation in standard form of ax plus by plus c equals 0 is given by this fancy little formula. D is the distance. Uh, notice the absolute value signs in there. We're basically taking the coefficient of x times our specific x coordinate plus the coefficient of y times our specific y coordinate plus the constant, taking the absolute value of that because we want our distance to be a positive number over the square root of a squared plus b squared. Wow, looks pretty complicated, huh? Well. Let's go ahead and work it out for this problem. We'll see what we get. Uh, I'm going to rewrite my a. a is 2, b is negative 1, and c is 4. And the point that we're interested in is the point 0, negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write x equals 0 and y equals negative 1. And now it's just a matter of plugging it in. So I get the distance is the absolute value of a, which is 2, times x, which is 0, uh, plus b, which is negative 1 times my y value, which is also negative 1, plus my constant, which is 4. The absolute value of all that, all over the square root of a squared, which is 2 squared, or 4, plus b squared, which is negative 1 quantity squared, or 1. So now if I just work that out in the numerator, I'm going to get the absolute value of 0. Uh, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, plus 4, all over the square root of 5. And that's going to give me 4 plus 1 is 5, and the absolute value of 5 is 5. Now, we have a radical in the denominator. That's pretty undesirable in most math classes. It's not considered to be more simplified or very pretty. So what we'll do is we'll multiply by a clever form of 1, which is the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, and we'll get rid of the radical from the denominator. That gives us 5 times the square root of 5, all over square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. And now we have common factors of 5 that divide out and look at this number that magically appears. We get the square root of 5. We've seen him already twice today. So we get the same answer by way of formula. 
By far, it's the easiest, but that's only if we know the formula or our teacher allows us to use it. Now it's time for the part of the program we call the say what? And today we're going to look at finding distance not between a point and a line, but the distance between two, two lines. Okay? Now, remember what we said about parallel lines in a previous episode. They have the same slope, if and only if statement. Well, it's still true, but there's another way to define parallel lines, and here it is. We can say two parallel lines in a plane are parallel if they are everywhere equidistant. Okay? That means it doesn't matter which two points we take on those parallel lines. When we measure the perpendicular distance between them, it should be the same distance everywhere. Okay? So, to measure the distance between two parallel lines, we can measure the distance between one of the lines, and it doesn't matter which one we choose, and then any point on the other line. And it should be the same for every point. So let's look at that example. I have two lines down here, one in blue, one in red. We want to find the distance between parallel lines P and Q, whose equations are given by y equals x plus 4 and y equals x minus 6. Well, the y equals x plus 4, uh, that's the one that has the y-intercept of 4, so that's going to be this one here. I'll go ahead and label it. Uh, that one we can call P, and let's call this guy down here Q. He has a y-intercept of negative 6. Now, how do we know that they're parallel? Let's review. They're in slope-intercept form, so the coefficient of your x values is your m, and this one has a coefficient of 1, and this one has a coefficient of 1, and 1 is equal to 1, so we know they have the same slope, therefore they are parallel. Now we want to figure out what the distance between them is. So I'm going to choose any point on line q, and a nice convenient point is this one down here that crosses the x-axis, the y-intercept of negative 6. So I'm going to use the point 0, negative 6 as my point of interest, and I've got the equation of this line here, which I'm calling P. That's this one. I need to put it into standard form. So if I start with y equals x plus 4, just by subtracting y from both sides, I get 0 equals x minus y plus 4. And so my coefficients then, A is going to be 1, that's a coefficient of x, B is going to be negative 1, and C is going to equal 4. And I already know that my specific value of x, x sub 1 is 0, and y sub 1 is negative 6. So it helps to list your variables here, to list them out. It makes it easier to plug into the equation. So now the equation is the distance equals the absolute value of a times your x, that's going to be 1 times 0, plus your b, negative 1, times your y, negative 6, plus your constant, which for us was 4. And in the bottom, I take the square root of a squared, which is 1 squared, or 1, plus negative 1 squared, which is also 1, and now I just simplify. And I'm running out of room here, but I think I can do it. In the numerator, I'm going to have 1 times 0 is 0, uh, plus 6, plus 4, all over the square root of 2. And so that's going to give me 10 over the square root of 2, and then all we have to do is get rid of that pesky radical out of the denominator by multiplying by the radical over itself, that's really multiplying by a clever form of 1, and I get 10 square root of 2 over 2, and we don't want to stop there because 10 halves, or 10 over 2 simplifies to 5 over 1, so we're just left with 5 square root of 2. And again, that's a simplified exact answer, so if you can get to that point, you're good, and then if you happen to have a calculator, uh, just punch in the keys and you'll get 7.071. And that would be the distance between this line and this line along the perpendicular. And that would be the same distance if we measured it anywhere along those two lines. Well, that concludes today's Lesson 7 on distances and parallel lines and orthogonal lines. I hope you learned something valuable that you could take back with you to the classroom. Now, I'll invite you to join me next week for a special, very special, sorry, spooky mathematical episode of that geometry show that you're sure not going to want to miss. Unless you're scared. <laughs> uh, I'll see you next week. And until then, I'm Kevin Corpy, and I'll catch you on the flip side. You're watching... channel 98... NBI